The response that we've received here at American Plumber Stories has just been overwhelming. So many inspirational and heartfelt messages that we're continuing the travels in season three, going everywhere from Missouri to California, even back to my home state in Tennessee, where you will meet some of the most inspirational people you've ever met. Some days I'm working before the sun kisses the sky. I watch the world wake up from the seat of my truck. I'm out here earning my piece of the pie. A good honest buck. No, it ain't love. I was taught to do the things I do so I don't depend on anyone. I work hard enough through the year so I play with So the goal of American Plumber Stories was always to inspire, educate, and entertain. And season one was entertaining. Season two, we focus on education. And season three, it's all about inspiration. We grew up kind of in poverty as I look back now. Our restroom was an outhouse. I didn't know the kitchens had running faucets. My father, once again, him and my mother thinking, you know, Jimmy's really messing up, here he is. He, he had a child at a really young age, got, got married at a really young age, got divorced, and now he's going in business and really doesn't have any business experience. How in the heck is he gonna make it in life? Whether it's good or bad, I always knew that whatever I wanted for my family was gonna be achieved through the success of this business. Nationwide, they have these firefighter calendars. Boom, there we go. How about we just put out a plumber's calendar? But it was a marketing thing that I would have never thought of. Sometimes you just got to get in and do it. And so that's how I ended up with that the calendar shot that had everyone going crazy. That was the photo that was going to take the cake, so to speak. As parents, we were like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Quinn's very tech savvy and smart. You know, he produces all our commercials. They're his ideas, and he wants to get the word out to kids to join the trade just as much as anybody. One of my favorites is Classroom of Kindergartners. The concept of the movie is like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? The teacher's asking the kids. And... I want to be a doctor. I want to be a singer. Ooh, ooh, I want to be a fireman. I want to work at William Plumbing and Heating. <sighs> The reason that American Plumber Stories exist is because a group of people at Fister Fawcett believe in the trades industry and plumbers in general, and their whole goal is to inspire and encourage and educate everyone out there on the trades, especially plumbing. Not just this city, but I'm sure there's most cities in the United States. Help want it. Help want it. Plumbing is not going to let you down. There are not enough people that understand plumbing dynamic. There's not a, enough people that understand routing water lines. The plumbing industry dealing with our aging workforce as a society is a gap we're trying to fill. Uh, plumbing and the trades have a bigger challenge even on top of that with the uh, negative perception of the trades. So what Fister Fawcett's and American Plumber Stories is doing to help build advocacy for the trades is priceless. I'm a huge advocate. At Fister Faucets, it's not just about selling faucets. That's definitely what we do, but it's the plumbing culture. Plumbers are our family, and this is a way to give back, and we're gonna to continue to give back. And we're gonna to continue to change the perspective of plumbers. I personally appreciate and I applaud the American Plumber Stories because there seems to be a lack of ample craftsmen, tradesmen, and perhaps part of it is a lack of awareness of programs that will provide a pathway. What you're doing is highlighting the value and the importance of plumbing, but you're also educating people to look for programs to resolve this larger national shortage of qualified craftsmen. Yes! Somebody asked me that I think that plumbing had a lot to do with my lifestyle now. And I literally said, plumbing has all to do with my lifestyle now. 
This trade, this unrespected, unpopular trade of plumbing has provided everything that I have. I was in a Votex class my junior and senior year in high school, and that taught me that I was going to be okay, that I'd be able to make a living. But for some reason, the school's systems all decided that we didn't need trade classes, that we didn't need shop class. I think that pendulum's swinging hard to our side now. And one by one, little by little, we're making a difference. When they can see that they can make a good living, and within three, four years, make six figures, What's wrong with that? I can't wrap my brain around the opportunities that are not being taken advantage of. This generation, maybe they're hoping I'm gonna have a rich uncle to die and leave me something, but it's not going to happen. We have plumbers that didn't have running water, and now they're some of the most successful people in our country, all because of plumbing. You know, here at Mr. Fawcett's, this has just been amazing for us, and we cannot wait to share these stories in season three.